and then I'll just okay. Can you see that screen? Yeah. Okay, great. So thank you very much, Melissa Shepherd, for allowing Provar to come along and speak today at the Ohana Architect Community Group. It's fantastic to be here and uh, I'm joined by a few of my colleagues. So welcome to uh, the rest of the team from Provar. Uh, we're gonna spend the next 52 minutes or maybe less uh, going through uh, a couple of slides or a few slides just to position where we are in our world. And then also I'm gonna very quickly hand over to my colleagues, Michael and Joe to cover a pretty interesting and compelling, we hope demo and uh, show you the value of where we fit into the Salesforce ecosystem. Uh, my name is Andrew Turner. I lead global partnerships for uh, Provar and uh, happy to be here. And um, let's get into it. Um, if you've got any questions during the session, please ask, uh, but we'll hopefully do a, we will be doing a Q&A session at the end of the session. So yeah, today's 24th of August, 2022. Uh, we're recording this, so this will be available on YouTube afterwards. So we, the leader in Salesforce quality, um, that's a quite an interesting statement. And uh, we will explain how we do that and how we underpin that and why we believe we are that um, as we go through this presentation. So introductions to expectations, uh, we are gonna cover a bit of a pre-read briefing. We're just gonna whisk through that. Uh, the, the actual copy of this presentation is in the general channel in the Slack uh, community. So if you need a copy of it, please check there. Um, I'm going to quickly whisk through some slides, just give you some highlights, and then I'm going to hand over very quickly to uh, Michael Daly, one of my colleagues, to co cover the uh, detailed end-to-end -end demo, which I think you'll like. And then we're also going to have a open Q&A session, and Joe and uh, Joe Garza and uh, Michael are going to cover that as well. And then they're going to pop it back to me, and we're just going to finish off with a, a very interesting offer that we'd like to make to the uh, Ohana Architect CTA community today, and um, we'd love you to get involved in that. So, Michael, are you there? Do you want to introduce yourself? I'm here. Thank you so much. Yes. So, as the slide says, I am the uh, DevOps guru. It's not a title I chose for myself, so don't don't shame me for that one. Um, I have been in the industry for a while in terms of automation and development, and so that's going to be my demo today. I'm going to be showing how uh, Provar Automation, Provar Manager, and DevOps Center all can work together to seamlessly orchestrate your pipeline. So that's what I'll be focusing on today. I'll hand it over to Joe to introduce himself. Yeah, so my name is Joe Garza. I'm one of the solution engineers here that, that works with Provar. Uh, so I'm generally seen as a technical resource while anyone is evaluating Provar. Um, but prior to joining here, I've worked directly in quality assurance testing, a combination of manual automation, as well as being a manager. So I'm very well versed in all things QA and I'll be happy here to support uh, answering questions for you guys. That's great. Thank you, guys. So, um, yeah, just going back on to continue the, the story. Um, so this is some stats. I can let you read them for yourselves. But obviously, you know, Probar is not a new business. We've been operating for quite a while. We're now operating globally. Uh, we've got a number of employees. We've got nearly over 180 employees now, a uh, number of customers across the world, and um, a thriving community that's been supported. And also we, we launched last year what's called the University of Provo, which we'll come to back to later. Um, we've also done some worldwide firsts, uh, most recently, obviously, with some stuff like uh, Salesforce Test Advisor and Salesforce DevOps Center, working with them very closely in the Salesforce engineering teams. And we've been supporting what's called Salesforce Serve, the Salesforce Early Release Validation Program for many, many years. We're now moving from a single to a multi-product company. So we don't just do automation, we're also doing uh, test management, but we'll come into that in a second. These are some of the customers that we're working with across the world. Um, you probably noticed some, recognize some of these logos. So we're not just uh, working in one particular sector, we're working across commercial and public sector and not-for-profit uh, industries and, and commercial se and sectors. Uh, we also are very proud of actually Salesforce are using Provar as well internally to help their engineering teams get in a great place. So um, there's going to be some stuff coming up at Dreamforce in, uh, in September. And we're going to share in that story uh, at Dreamforce, one of the presentations, which should be good to, to be to see and get to know more about that. We also obviously recognize that customer success is very important. 
So if you've ever heard of G2, G2 is an independent uh, reviewer, I suppose they, they collect customer feedback about uh, customers' experience with different uh, platforms and software products. And we're pleased to get a really good recognition from them about how we're doing, how, to, how we do business with people, how we actually interact and support users of our platform. Obviously the Salesforce market is very dynamic. Uh, low code is a, is, a, is a phenomenon that obviously Salesforce is championing, very, very big player in that market. And obviously people are starting to move over to how do you democratize low code? It's forcing what we call the testing and quality agenda. And a phenomenon we call scissors and testers where people that maybe, not, maybe non-technical move more into a, you know, from a business analysis role or other roles into more of a kind of testing role, business testing role and QA role that actually requires skills and capabilities that maybe are less technical, but they need to still do the job. So we'll explain how we help them to do that. Some of the testing challenges we find is that, you know, it's quite a fragmented market. There's lots of tools out there. It's quite difficult to decide which ones you want to do for functional testing or API testing. That's where we play. Um, but obviously, you know, if you're actually a Salesforce architect or you're a Salesforce product owner, you want to understand how to how to make the right decisions about reference architectures. And we can explain as we go through this, how we fit into that overall architecture with some stuff we're going to show you in a second. So what we have is we have two solutions. We focus, our original product was focused on Salesforce centric test automation, which is about people that predominantly use Salesforce as their, you know, a very important strategic application, their digital app transformation. But then what, more recently, we just released literally last week, our, um, latest product which is in the it's a salesforce native products on the app exchange it's called prova manager uh, and it's around test management which is a life cycle from a use case a jira user story all the way through a test case to a release candidate into production so you get this kind of how do you get this kind of line of sight around that and michael and joe are going to be talking about as that in a second so you know pro our automation we, we we see we've got a lot of uniques around this area we've got a lot of heritage around this area and we're using metadata. So we're using metadata to actually pull that stuff together, identify where the release has changed, and make sure that you build a, a testing, a test case, a regression pack that is resilient and is actually underpinned by, you know, whatever release you're on, you're going to have a surety that that release is not going to break and you're not going to go into lots of rework. Because obviously, as you go, as you scale out your Salesforce deployment, you want to make sure you can rely on that. And that's what we want to do is build a reliable QA and testing process for your business to drive good Salesforce quality outcomes. So this situation, you know, you plan something, you code something, you then get into testing and then Salesforce, you know, release the major release. How do you, how do you deal with that? What you want to do is you want to avoid this thing where your tests break and you have to go into a rework cycle. So what we've been doing over the last, you know, number of years is basically working out how we make sure that your testing framework and your tests don't break and they are re re reusable, and the resilient to uh, future releases, future major releases, and how you deal with customizations. We also want to make it intuitive. So we want to make using Salesforce and, and Probar as easy as using Salesforce. So in that way, you can see here, we've got a, we use a Google Chrome add-in, uh, and it's literally the right click, add to test case, and you're building up your regression, your test plan, your test cases in a, in a very easy to use way where it's, you know, it's non-technical. You're not having to get into code and, and, and do that kind of level of detail. Obviously you can do if you want to do. And then we've got these, got, obviously got this kind of, uh, you know, pause, rewind, resume. You've got this piece around also using prediction for how you complete the, uh, the test uh, variables that you're using for that particular test case. Uh, reusability is obviously a big thing as well. How would you actually like to create one test and then actually have cover many different variants? We see that a lot. You know, you've got a situation here where you've got multiple languages, multiple environments multiple browsers, multiple roles, you know, you can encapsulate that and have that in one test, one reusable test, which is very powerful. And obviously we realized that even though Salesforce may be a very strategic part of that organization's architecture, and you can see all in the bubble, you know, all the different uh, clouds that you may want to deploy and including Salesforce industry velocity, et cetera. But you also have other applications. So we've got a number of customers who have chosen Provar and then they've actually used Provar to do end-to-end -end testing uh, you know, where you have a, a process which covers Salesforce and non-Salesforce applications. One of the examples of the, that's more uh, a good example of showing how the, the, the nuances of using open source tools versus manual testing versus automation from Provar is this company called ALM Brown. It's a, it's a very large insurance company in Denmark. Um, they originally were on Selenium 
uh, they built all their Selenium uh, framework and Selenium tests. And then they, they went into a, a new release and it broke all their tests. They had to massive levels of rework. So they went back to manual testing, but they realized that was unsustainable. So they actually switched to Provar. And you can see some of the stats here around the amount of hours that have been saved by moving into that kind of environment. Um, and a, a big saving and also protecting production, uh, which is obviously a key thing as you scale your deployment of Salesforce. Another example is uh, Splunk. Uh, you've probably heard of the very big tech company. They've got a situation where they've got multiple applications. This is showing you core Salesforce with CPQ and also with NetSuite. So it shows that we can cover these types of end-to-end -end, you know, heterogeneous environments in one, one Provar uh, flow and one Provar test regression set. We mentioned our relationship with Salesforce. This is where we fit into the Salesforce ecosystem. We've been working with the, uh, the customer quality team for a number of years. And this is where we fit in. So our Provar release is the output of the Surf program where we basically do a number of early tests before Sandbox Preview has been released. And actually we're doing many thousands of tests and iterating giving feedback to the Salesforce team so that it, actually they have a really good release into, into uh, Sandbox Preview before it becomes into GA. Obviously, if you have if you're not using Provar, then you may have to get the you get the risk of analyzing and having the risk of rework within that rework spiral I mentioned a bit earlier. Provar Manager is our latest product that we brought out. It's a Salesforce native application, and it's all about organizing your tests and, and our analysis and our analytics and, and analytics and data around how you, how is your QA performing, how is your quality uh, of your Salesforce release, how is that going, how is how you, you know, you're getting past fail, but where is it failing? What's the root cause analysis? And also how you optimize. So how you have that feedback loop and integrating all these different applications into one, one place is a good place to start. Also, what we want to think about is how we cater for all these different types of persona and role within an organization. So as you see, you know, traditionally you would think, you know, Provar just works with testers, but also we want to give you feedback on your Apex unit tests on developers getting the fast feedback loop. How do we work with your DevOps engineering team? But also, interestingly enough, also how do we create visibility with your metrics and your analysis on the stakeholders that are actually paying for the run and operate and paying for the actual investments you make into Salesforce? Obviously, the citizen tester we talked about a bit earlier with the business analysts that maybe move into that type of role. And you can't forget, obviously, admins who are looking at the overall health of the system to reduce risk and manage the resources around that. So we see it as a very inclusive platform that we're bringing to, bringing to market. What we also do with that is also bring you the things about flexibility and actionability. What we're going to do is provide insights. So we're collecting the data, providing you insights that can drive actions and can drive improvement, continuous improvement in your Salesforce deployment. In terms of the, you know, how that reference architecture fits together, this is our kind of, you could say, you know, high level architecture slide. But what it's trying to show you is how, for example, release, you know, people, a lot of people using Jira for release management for the user stories. How do you integrate that into Provar Manager, design and plan and document your, your test strategy and your test plans? Then you execute that and you may be using Provar Automation, you may be using Selenium, Apex, et cetera, you know, JUnit, et cetera, manual testing. You can bring that all into and record all those re results in Provar Manager. It obviously integrates with DevOps Center, which uh, Michael's going to show you in a few minutes. But we've also done native integration to a number of third parties, CI, CD, and uh, DevOps tools as well. And then also you've then also got the other stuff, which is underpinned by, as you can see, the, the great features that are coming out of the Salesforce platform itself. So you, it's a very friendly environment. You, you Usability-wise, it's like using Salesforce, our na native Probar Manager application. And then to finish off, really, I suppose, you know, people talk about, okay, what's the, so what? What's the outcome? What's the benefit? Where have you actually got the, 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 um, the results and what's been the actual thing? So, you know, saving time on, testing releases, which is a continuous uh, value, you know, end-to-end -end regression testing, minimizing impacts in production, and obviously generally making yourselves more efficient and effective. In terms of getting involved with our Provar community, we, um, we obviously have a very um, vibrant community, um, and we you know, obviously open to you joining our community. Um, I know this is a fa fantastic, very vibrant community on the CTA side, if you're interested in joining the Provar community, please let us know and we can obviously give you that space and the whole thing is about learning and knowledge sharing and best practices, et cetera, and building relationships with people in the, in the network and in the ecosystem. In terms of uh, you know, education, 
Uh, we launched last year what we call the University of Provar. Uh, we've got a number of courses uh, available for what we call the essential certification and advanced skills and our, of our automation platform. We've also de developed a set of electives which kind of sit around that whole, the processes and skills you would want to have around, um, you know, logically sitting around our platform. And then we've also more recently launched some courses for Provar Manager, uh, which we're going to build out as a curriculum as well. We also deliver uh, on, you know, on-site training and pre-recorded training with an instructor, if that's something that you're interested, be interested in. And the great thing is we've been, been collaborating with Salesforce and we've actually been giving, providing direct input, which is going to be released before Dreamforce, around some testing and quality assurance uh, curriculum that's going to be directly available on Trailhead which is fantastic. And then developing forward, we're going to be developing some role-based curriculum to help with partnerships and help out with our existing customers. So, if, for example, if you're, a, I don't know, an architect or a developer or a tester or a citizen tester, what is that kind of evolution of your skills that you should be looking at as a curriculum? So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to my very capable friend, Mr. Michael Daly. Michael, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you all see my screen? Can you all see my screen okay? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So before I get started on the actual demo portion, I'm just going to give an overview of the different personas that I'm going to be representing throughout this entire process. So first, there is going to be the architect, of course, the project lead, the QA, the developer, and the release manager. So I'll briefly describe what those specific personas are going to be responsible for in this process. So firstly, there's the architect who's going to identify all the different systems and the integrations and just define the scope of the overall project. And then I'll actually show how we've defined ahead of time the systems and the different environments that we're going to be testing uh, as far as Salesforce is concerned. The project lead is primarily going to be responsible for creating the work item in DevOps Center. And this is what we're going to be using to assign and track work. And then, of course, the QA is going to be dealing with uh, existing tests that have already been checked into a regression suite. And once we make a deployment, we're going to go back and show how we can edit or create a new test case and add that into the regression suite post deployment. Uh, of course, there is the developer who's going to be responsible for actually executing the work on the work item as it pertains to DevOps Center. And that will involve committing to the work item branch uh, from their particular developer scratch org. And then from there, the release manager is going to take those changes, track the pipeline, and make sure that the promotion downstream is going smoothly. All that's been set up prior to this, so I'll show you exactly how that's going to work. And then finally, the QA is going to basically just sign off on the tests, make sure that any updates need to be made to the existing test cases are made, and then sync that to Provar Manager. And lastly, of course, everyone's going to be involved in actually viewing the test results. So those are going to be visible to everyone via Slack integration, as well as in Provar Manager. So I'll show that at the end. So I'll go ahead and jump into Provar first to basically illustrate what exactly is going to be happening each time we make a deployment and promotion further downstream. So this is our test project that we've built out in Provar Automation ahead of time. And it's already been synced to Provar Manager. So basically this sync is what allows us to track and report on test results as they are executed from Provar. So this will actually track my results in Provar Manager, which exists on my Salesforce org. So basically what I've done here is the QA resource is I've created a test plan. I've created some test cases to test this DreamHouse app in, uh, integration. And then I'm going to be iterating upon that by adding a new field to the property object as the developer, and then I'm going to make sure that my test cases don't break. So I'm going to run this regression suite each time I make a deployment. So I'll go ahead and switch over to uh, my DevOps Center environment so you can see that and how that's been established and set up. So this pipeline illustrates basically what's going to be happening throughout this process. So we have our developer environment, which is my scratch org. So this is where I'm going to be making the initial change whenever I check out that work item branch. And then from there, pending the regression suite running on that scratch org, we're actually going to be promoting that to the dev environment. And then from there, it's going to go further downstream. Eventually, it'll be packaged in the UAT environment, which is where we're basically creating a work item bundle. So that's going to bundle all the work items that we've developed and promoted to the UAT environment. So that way we can deploy that and have a release candidate for production. 
So all this has been set up ahead of time. All these environments have been synced to make sure that everything's on the same version initially, uh, same version of Salesforce, of course, and all the same metadata as it pertains to the application that we're working on. So uh, next, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to show uh, Provar Manager. So this is where the tests are going to actually be tracked. So we'll we'll go back to this in a minute, but this is just to show you uh, the test plan that we're iterating on is the test plan that I was just showing you in Provar Automation, the desktop client. So this test plan is linked to uh, my uh, project that I created in Provar, and it just gives an overview of the different test cases that I'm going to be running, all the different test suites that are contained in that test plan. And then, of course, I have my actual report here, which shows the latest executions of the test cases. So this is from my previous deployment, uh, the 1.2 release. So uh, this shows all the environment uh, here that this was run against. So we can see the order of execution. I basically just have three test cases in this regression suite. So initially, of course, it ran in my scratch org environment, and then it was promoted to dev. The test cases ran there and then so on and so forth. So we'll see how this progression actually shows up when we start migrating these changes. But first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and create my work item. So this is going to be a change where I'm going to be adding a new field. So we'll just say add new custom field, email to property object. And I'm going to assign it to myself since I will be responsible for the work. So initially, once that work item is created, uh, as the developer, this is where you basically take over and you decide how you want to perform that work, whether you want to do it separately uh, outside of DevOps Center or you want to use an integrated environment. Uh, my environments have already been set up for me, so I created the scratch org and it's been mapped. So any changes I make to the metadata in this particular environment will be reflected directly on this work item branch. Okay, so this this promotion or this uh, status change to in progress creates the work item branch. So initially I have no changes other than this profile change, which I won't be touching right now. So initially there's nothing here that I want to deploy. I need to make my change as the developer and then I'll pull the changes to actually commit those into that branch. But before I do that, I wanna go ahead and show the uh, actual integration between DevOps Center and Test Manager. So if we're looking at uh, the test manager DevOps Center integration, this is the project that I'm looking at in DevOps Center, DreamHouse demo. These are all of my environments that I've defined. So this is my scratch org environment and so forth. And I'll also see my work item that I just created here, add new custom field email. So if I click on that work item, I can see all the information just the same as it is in DevOps Center. Everything is linked over. Right now, nothing is approved. It hasn't been promoted. But once I migrate this to a further downstream environment, these fields will be updated. So I'll be able to track it in two locations. Uh, what I want to do now, though, is go ahead and add my test cases to this work item so that I can track those as well. So I'm going to go ahead and find my test case for creating the broker. I'll go ahead and add another one here for my creating of the new property. And then lastly, I have one here to create and convert a lead. So now I, what I've done is basically create a link between those work items and the test cases that I want to run uh, whenever this work item has work that been, has been done on it. So now that that has been done and mapped, I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to my VS code where I'm going to be making the change. So I essentially have three dev hubs that I've already linked. Um, these are all the environments that I'm working in. So this is my scratch org. This is my actual dev hub, uh, which is my dev org. And then I have my UAT environment in the production. So initially uh, I have nothing here. So what I wanna do as the dev is I wanna go ahead and check out that branch that I just created for that work item. So I'll go ahead and do that first before I begin my work. So now I'm working on that work item branch. So now any changes I make to this org, I want to do two things. I want to push the changes to the uh, Scratch org. And then I also want to commit my changes to the work item branch. So first I'll do uh, the change. So I have this uh, already created. I'm 
All right, so uh, what I've done, this, these are all the changes. So this just reflects all the changes to add that new email field to the property object. So you can see all my changes here. So what I wanna go ahead and do is push those changes to my scratch org. If I can get my name correct, there it is. Go ahead and force that one. Okay, so I should see six components that have a change there. So once that has been completed, that push, uh, I'll go ahead. Of course, this always happens. Okay, we have a plan B. Because I have source tracking enabled, I can make the change directly in the org itself. So I'll just go ahead and do that instead. I'm going to add a new field here. This is going to be a text field. And we'll go to next. And we're going to say email is the label. And we'll just say 25 characters. Go ahead and hit next. Adding it to all the layouts. And now I'll just go ahead and do save. Okay, so now we have that email field that's been added to my uh, property object in my scratch org. So if I go back to DevOps Center and do a pull changes, what we should see are all the components that were upgraded or updated as a result of that change. So I'll make sure I get all the changes here. And I'll go ahead and select those changes that I want to push. Okay. Now, once I do this commit, uh, what's going to happen is um, I can do iterative commits. I don't have to do a single commit, but initially this is going to commit my changes to this work item branch uh, from these metadata changes that I have here. So if I go ahead and go to my GitHub repository, I should be able to see my work item branch here. And this is my comment, which shows up essentially as my commit message. So I just want to go ahead and do one thing and make sure that uh, that changes there. So I see the timestamp, so that should be good. Now, from here, uh, once the change has been committed and I'm happy with it, I've got to go ahead and create a review in DevOps Center. So this is the process that actually begins the promotion downstream. So this is going to create a change request which will essentially create a pull request in GitHub. And this pull request is what's going to initiate our regression test suite to execute. So if I go back to GitHub, what I will see here now is that we have uh, this process that's running and it's been queued off from that pull request that I just created from DevOps Center. So you can see that there. Now what's actually happening here is it's going to, um, use that scratch org and it's going to run my test cases that I showed initially in Provar, uh, these test cases here. So it's going to go through the process of making sure that I can still create a broker, a new property and create and convert a new lead as well. So all that's part of my regression suite. So this takes about um, two minutes or so to execute, but once this is completed, this will update my results in Provar manager and it will also, uh, change the status of this particular work item to where this promotion can be ready to promote. So I'll go ahead and show the test cycle where I can actually see the test plan results. So they'll show up here. So initially uh, I still have my earlier execution. So I'll wait for this to complete.
Again, this doesn't take very long, but this is just running all my regression tests against that scratch org that I just made that change in. And it's running the last test case now. So it's uploading my test results as it's running each test case. So not at the very end, but it's gonna do it iteratively. So if I go ahead and do a refresh here, I should actually see some test cases already. Yeah, so there we go. So we have our three test cases that have been ran in our scratch org environment. So all that's been uploaded to test manager. So this job is now complete. So what will happen now, uh, once this job is marked as a complete, I can go ahead and refresh this page. Okay, so now this is ready to promote. So this wasn't here before. So once that process has been completed and the GitHub action comes back all good, so everything here is a check, all my test cases passed, I am ready to promote this. Okay, so once it's been marked as ready to promote, essentially the work item is done. I'm done uh, adding changes to it. I'm not gonna be doing anything else from the developer persona. I've added my new custom field. All the metadata changes have been deployed there. So if I go to my pipeline, essentially what has happened here is that I have uh, two different views here. This just shows the environments with all their different versions but this view will show you the actual stage of each environment. So right now, this is my work item. So if I go ahead and check this here, I can promote it. So what this promotion is going to do is it's going to create a, another process that's going to run my test cases in the developer environment. So each time I promote this up, it's creating a pull request that's going to make sure that before it publishes those changes to that target environment that the test cases that I originally ran are still working properly. Okay. So you can see that another pull request has been created here. So this is the process where it's going to merge into the UAT environment. So before we merge to UAT, we run the same test cases. So basically the same process that just ran here, except now it's going to run against dev. So by the time that this process is complete, what we will then see in test manager is we will see the uh, dev environment will have updates here for the test cases that have been ran for this particular test plan. Now, all the while, I'll go back to our integration point here. So if I look at my work item, that I just worked on. So we can see here now the status has been updated to promoted or the state has been updated to promoted. We can see the development's been checked off, uh, it's been approved. So the promotion status basically just says that this work item is complete. Uh, the next state that it will be migrated to is the closed state. And that only happens once it's been merged into your, the environment that's actually going to be bundling all your all of your work items. So where you're creating your package delivery, essentially. So that'll happen after it has been merged to UAT. So I'll go ahead and check on this process now and see where we're at. Should be all, all mostly done with running these test cases in UAT. Okay, so the reporting has began. So if I go back to test manager, should start to see some results here for dev. So my first test case is already ran and completed in the dev environment. So I see that here. Go ahead and refresh. There's my other one. Just waiting on that last test case now. All right, perfect. And I've also been in parallel reporting all my results to Slack as well. So I'll show you what that looks like once I show this result from the uh, dev execution. So there we should have three test cases for that particular environment. There it is. So we have all three tests for dev and for our scratch org. So everything is passed so far and looking good. 
So now going back to uh, DevOps Center, now we are ready to promote this to UAT. So basically uh, the process is the same. Uh, it's going to be the same process as what we did for this org to this org. Every time we promote, it's gonna create that pull request, validate by running our regression suite, and then it's all, only then will allow you to promote the changes. All right, so if I go to my GitHub Actions, I'll show you again the same thing that's been happening has happened here. So once this is promoted, yep, so now it's promoted to the UAT. And prior to putting it into production, again, we want to run this in the UAT environment to make sure that our regression is still passing. So now we have created our uh, last pull request which is going to be the pull request to merge all of our work items that we bundled into our production environment. So basically the same process that we just saw for Dev and Scratch, except in this case, uh, we'll see some three test cases here for UAT. So rather than show that same thing again, I'll uh, switch over to my Slack so I can show you what's been happening here as well. So this is my results that I've been reporting to Slack. Um, and I also have a little... Uh, identifier here to let me know which environment I'm actually reporting these results from, so that way I can identify them. But it's also attaching all of my PDF reports from each execution. So if I wanted to take a closer look at these test runs, I can do that here. And it would also upload these even in the event of a failure. And one thing I'll show you when I'm actually going into the ProVar tool is that uh, we have the capability to take a screenshot of any at any time in the UI. And if there is a failure for any reason in the UI, ProVar will automatically take that screenshot. So this is the, a sample of what the report looks like. Uh, basically, this is what we've uploaded to Test Manager, uh, the three individual test cases that we ran along with uh, the duration and status of all those. Okay, I'll check on this action. This one should be nearing the end as well. So we have one last test case. So if I go back to my report here, I can see UAT has began executing and showing up as passed here as well. Now this is just one particular report or dashboard that we have in ProBar Manager that shows you the actual execution of your test report. Uh, tests that you're executing as part of your plan. But if you wanted to get more visibility of it, if you go to the actual test plan itself, this is where I can see the individual test cycles, uh, as they're called, which is essentially just a test run uh, targeted against a certain environment. So I'd be able to see the breakdown here for each particular environment. So we see I have Scratch Dev and UAT, as well as the actual duration. So we can see how long test cases took uh, across different environments. So if we're doing any kind of comparison of the overall process, just to see if there was a different performance or anything like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to my DevOps Center. Lost my tab here. Just to show you the last part of this process, I'm not going to go through uh, with this last promotion here just for the sake of time, but uh, my work item here, it's still in the promoted stage because I haven't officially gone through of promoting this to my final environment. But if I go to my pipeline, uh, basically this is the last stage here. So once we get to this UAT stage, this is where work items will be considered promoted until they are actually bundled and released into production. So if I click uh, promote as a bundle here, I need to give it a version. So I'll just go to 1.3. And again, this is doing the same thing that we've been doing all along. So this is a very repeatable process. Uh, all the environments are gonna be in sync at the end of this because they each have the same exact metadata We've made sure that we checked out a work item branch before we started our work. So that way our work was done in isolation in a scratch org. 
before it was migrated to the dev or UAT or production environments. All right, so that's been promoted. So the very last thing that will happen here, uh, once that has been promoted, is it's actually going to run the test cases in my main branch, which is also my production environment. So I won't sit here and uh, wait on that to execute because I do want to jump over to Provar and show uh, what's been going on. So, so the test case that I was the test cases that I were executing was uh, these test cases here, creating a broker property and creating and converting a lead. So in order to create or edit a, an existing test case, we have what's called a test builder inside of Provar Automation that allows you to basically, as Andrew was referring to earlier, build and edit your test cases just exactly how you would use Salesforce. So I, uh, I was just doing this all through the APIs before, but I want to show you an actual test case in the UI as well. Let me fix my screen here. Wrong one. Oops. Okay, so that was just running through the API. Let me run this through. So that was the same test case just running through the API. Uh, you didn't actually see anything happen there in the UI, but what that did is just um, essentially just created a broker and a property object using SQL queries. So if we look at our, uh, one of our tabs here in the org browser actually shows us all of the metadata information for the org that we're connected to. So this is my scratch org. So I look at the property object here and what I should see uh, are all the fields that I've created for that particular object. Now, what you don't see initially is that email field. So what I need to do before I can actually see that field is reload my metadata information for that org, because all of this is cached locally. So once I do that reload, I should have visibility of that email field here. And this normally takes anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds, depending on the size of the metadata. Okay, so now if I go to my property object here, scroll down, there's my email field. So we do see that in my metadata. So once this is here, that allows me to interact with it in the UI. So normally automation is always going to be built against something called the page object model. So you're gonna be relying on page locators for individual elements that you want to basically automate as part of the process. So traditionally in tools like Selenium, the way that that's done is you have to navigate to the application that you're trying to test. You have to inspect the page or the DOM and find out exactly how that element is structured in the page to figure out what to tell Selenium how to locate it. Rather than doing it that way, uh, that tends to be a very brittle process. Provar uses the metadata for the org that I'm connected to to actually get information about where those elements are on the page and how to locate them. So a quick example here. So if I want to interact with any of these elements on the page, I've already added uh, a lot here. One I haven't added is this particular phone field. So if I go ahead and right click on that field and go to add the test case, what I will see open up in test builder basically is the layout for the page that I'm on. So this is the Salesforce uh, property new screen. It tells me the field name. So this is the actual API name for the field that I'm interacting with. And the only thing I need to tell Provar is what value I want to place in that particular field. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a function here that gives me a random phone number. So we'll just do a 10 digit numeric. So this is going to give me a random phone number in that phone number field. And all of the other fields that I've added here were added in the same fashion. So basically I'm right clicking on these individual elements on the screen, I'm adding them to my test case and I'm populating them with data. Now, of course, uh, as testing best practices go, we don't wanna be relying on uh, static data or any kind of existing data in the org. So what I've actually done is created a spreadsheet and you can see here at the very beginning of the test case, I'm reading all of my data that I'm gonna be using for this test 
from a spreadsheet ahead of time. So that way I can follow more data-driven testing pre uh, practices in this case. Okay, so that is a quick example of what the actual UI looks like in Provar and as well as test manager and how that link is done. So if I wanted to create a new test case and link that to test manager, essentially all I have to do is create it here in Provar Automation, establish a connection using this test plan, and then upload it. So there's an upload process which allows me to basically upload all of my test cases into test manager. And this is a one-time thing. Once that link is created, anytime I run these test plans locally or as part of my pipeline, as you saw, it's going to upload those test results to uh, to DevOps, or sorry, to Program Manager. So as I've been showing you that, hopefully prod is completed and I can see that it has. So all of my test cases have now ran in prod and passed, which is great. So if I look here at my environments, what I should now see is that everything is on version 1.3. So everything is in sync. Everything now has that email field. And the last thing I'll look at here is the actual work item. So if I go to my work item, I should be able to see that that work item is now closed. So that completes the process of basically doing the full development, the end to end of deploying it, of testing it, making sure that everything works and as well as seeing those results. So of course we also have our Slack report here as well. So this is my production. Okay. I think that's all I wanted to show for today. I'll go ahead and open it up now to any questions that we may have. Hey, um, this is Caesar. Uh, thank you for the presentation. A quick question on the um, integration with the DevOps Center. So currently DevOps Center supports GitHub only. Um, does Provar support a native integration with Azure DevOps, uh, Bitbucket, or any other uh, CICD pipeline tools? Yeah, so Provar uh, Automation, what you're looking at here, which is essentially our desktop client that allows us to author test cases and whatnot, this is integrated directly into my GitHub project. So mm -hmm. um, you can see here, it actually shows the branch that I'm connected to. So this is this is integrated to GitHub from the my local machine. Uh, as far as actually executing in a CI CD pipeline, uh, we do have a CLI, and that's what I was using to integrate uh, with GitHub Actions. So this GitHub Action basically uh, runs all of my test cases in a in a pipeline setting. Um, of course, this is running in the cloud. This isn't running on my machine or anything like that. Right. So if if you were to now, the follow-up question would be, if you were to, to set up a proper DevOps process where you have a separate server that would run those tests anytime anyone submits a pull request, uh, what would be the, the pro procedure? You know, that, that would be a, a remote desktop that you need to set up a provar on, configure, and then, and then it would run tests continuously. And in this case, what is the... Um, what is the mechanism to promoting changes to Provar scripts from your local development environment into that server environment? Okay, so the first part of your question uh, is it depends on the tool or the solution that you're using or you're wanting to use to actually run the test cases. So the reason that I've used GitHub Actions in this case, uh, besides the fact that it integrates with DevOps Center is because if I use GitHub Actions, it actually allows me to create essentially a Docker container that I can run these test mm -hmm. cases. Uh, so that way I don't have to worry about infrastructure or maintenance or having to keep software up to date or anything like that. So uh, this repo is actually public, so I can I can send this link in a, uh, as a follow up. But this will this basically uses a YAML file to define the environment that I'm using to run my test cases in. Uh, mm -hmm. As far as the second part of your question, so. If I want to update any test cases, um, that that's a great point. So uh, ideally, now this was just a demo. Ideally, you would have your testing repository and your development repository separate. And obviously, the reason for that would be is that if I wanted to make make changes to any of my test cases, right now they're contained inside of this uh, development repository, which tracks all of my changes to, for my actual application. But 
I don't necessarily want the two to be linked, right? I may be making changes or updates to test cases separately apart from the development process. Um, ideally, it would be kind of closely integrated, but it may not be one and the same as far as the commits and the pull requests and everything. So you don't want that to cause any kind of issues. So typically, we would suggest those be separate repositories because you want your actual testers and your QAs to be building out test cases, uh, whether or not they're being ran in a pipeline or whether or not they're being integrated to the pipeline using this uh, strategy here. Last question from my side. Um, so in this test scenario, the tests run quite smoothly, right? But you probably will run into a situation when you have a lot of tests that will take a lot of time to run through. What is the best practice on when you run the proper test suite? Is it on each pull request or it's when you deploy to UAT on the release branch, for example, if it takes hours to go through all the test scenarios? Yeah. If you have that use case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that that's an, another great point. And again, this is kind of uh, the purpose of this particular demo was to kind of show how it all worked. So ideally, you're correct. You would probably be setting up a process that ran whenever you push to a certain environment rather than creating a pull request, because that would allow you, of course, to get that validation instantly. Because like you're saying is basically the way that my process works. If I deploy to the dev branch, for example, via that pull request, uh, the chain, the actual test cases aren't ran in the dev environment until I create the pull request to migrate those to UAT. So that could be a bit of a problem in the process. So ideally, what you would do is you would set up the actual process to kick off whenever you push changes to a particular environment rather than when you create a pull request for the next one, if that makes sense. Right. Thank you. Yep. Good questions, though. Any, any other questions? I think it's because the, the demo is so awesome, you've stunned them into silence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all good. I'll hand it back over to Mr. Turner. He's going to talk about some more things. So I'll go ahead and stop my share. Cool. OK, let's just. Uh... So in the couple of minutes we've got left, um, let's just uh, finish off with a little. Okay, so thank you very much for, for showing that. Um... Where do I show from here? That's what I try and work out Google. <laughs> 